Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. We are getting set here for this uh, Bible study night. This is your weekly faith connection. And uh, I'm Pastor Paul Thompson. I'm, I'm the head pastor of Indy Harvest Church. And I just want to make sure all is well that I got everything up here working right. Uh, amen. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I'm going to, uh, I think I'm, I'm, I'm going to share my, uh, I'm going to share this thing on my, on my feed. And so as you come up there, y'all share everything also glory to God. But I want to welcome everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, good evening. Good evening. I pray your day has been well. This is the day the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Now, today we're about to go into our part three of um, teaching on being led of this, being led by the spirit. Now, I do want to do this first and I want to get right into the lesson on tonight that first of all, I want to invite everyone. If you're looking at me and checking this out for the first time, if you're uh, if you're if you're uh, if you're um, sometime you watch it off and on an associate, but you've never been to the local church in the harvest, then I would love to invite you. If you're in the Indianapolis area, if you're in the greater Indianapolis area, come on out on a Sunday morning at 11 a.m. at 2926 East Washington Street and be a part of the revival. Be a part of what God is doing. If you need healing, deliverance, salvation a touch if you need a word from god if you just want to be in a place where you can be free where the where where you can uh, experience holy spirit doing whatever he wants to do then you need to get to Indy harvest you'll be glad you came again the address is 2926 east washington street we're there right we're there every sunday morning at 11 a.m m and my wife and i will love to have you there so make sure you make plans connect with us on all of our platforms connect with us on facebook of course here connect with us paul and tar thompson uh um connect with this connect with us and follow us on everything like and subscribe uh, uh to everything on youtube check us out on youtube check us out on instagram check us out on all the platforms look for us check us out and connect and let's go and let's grow together uh so so let's get ready to open up with the word of prayer and then we're going to get right into the right into the word on today and we're going to get right in there talking about being led of the spirit because we have a lot of ground to cover today so father thank you for this time that we can come into your presence and we can come and sit at your feet and learn of you we're doing the needful thing now lord we're doing the thing that we need to do and that is sitting at your feet hearing your word now lord feed us and fill us up in the name of jesus with your word give us wisdom and understanding let uh let let the let revelation flow from me in the name of jesus speak to your people bless your people touch your people give a word to your people do a miracle for your people in the name of jesus manifest yourself by your power on tonight i ask you to do so in jesus name we bind every demon on assignment we bind all uh all disturbances we declare no weapon formed against this this stream will will prosper in jesus name but we the declare Jesus to be Lord over this broadcast to the glory of God in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Listen, I want, I do want to let you know that if you do need to have, if you do have a prayer request, that's one of the beauties about this, uh, about doing things live like this, that if you have a prayer request, if you have, uh, have anything that you want uh, to pray, I will, you can just write it on up there. If you need prayer about anything, just write it up there and, uh, and, and I can pray with you and minister to you as I see it up there. If if I if there may be technical difficulties and I don't see it in time, whenever I do see it um, and we do see it, my wife and I, we will pray and we will uh, we will minister unto the Lord on your behalf. So so if you need prayer for any reason, just let us know. We can be interactive on this thing. Um, so also make sure you share it. Let somebody know that Indy Harvest is up here and we ready to go. Um, let's get let's get down let's get down to uh business and let's get let's start uh let's get going on this uh on this being led by holy spirit we this is the third week we've uh 
we've we've talked we've been talking about this um it, we started off talking about holy spirit and uh and god started dealing with me about and um and about the about being led of holy spirit and the leading of holy spirit in our everyday lives um he started dealing with me about uh when it comes down to our harvest when it comes down to the harvest that god has for us when it comes down to um when it comes down to everyday life and victory, when it comes down to um, answer prayer, it's important that we are led by Holy Spirit uh, because our answer prayer can be in your in, in your ability to hear from God. Now, uh, I needed I needed I needed a million Christians to hear that. Uh, I needed a million Christians to hear that because uh, many a times we're waiting for something to manifest in the spectacular when God is leading us with that still small voice in our everyday life that is causing a uh, manifestation to our prayers um, it's important that we're led by God when it comes down to our prayer life let's look at um, let's look at a scripture and and as you uh, as you come up here as you get up here I want you all to let me know you up here just send me a high a thumbs up or God bless you or whatever um, whatever uh, whatever you want to do just 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 make sure the thumbs up and no other fingers are up on it all right, all right. <laughs> but uh but let's look at this word here let's look at some um, let's look at some scripture I want to start with this Old Testament scripture that I've been reading and meditating on for years. Isaiah chapter 48, Isaiah chapter 48 and verse, uh, let's check out 17. Listen to this, Isaiah 48, 17. Thus saith the Lord, thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit. Now that that's, I remember when I first saw that, uh, I, 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 I said, I got to find, I first saw this, I, I saw this on a, um, on a, uh, on, on like a, uh, a, 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 it was a, 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 like a letterhead and it had different scriptures of prosperity all, you know, all on it. And I saw this and I said, hold on, let me turn into this Bible and let me go and look and make sure that it really says that, that God will teach us how to profit. I had to find this thing. I had to find it and make sure it was in the Bible. And this is in the Bible, Isaiah 48 and 17. He says, I will teach you to profit. Now that word profit in every in every uh, sense of the word means increase. He, he will teach us to increase. He He's going to help us to increase now now watch now he's going to begin to give us the strategy of how he's going to do it he's about to give us the strategy of how he's going to increase us how he's going to do it let's check it out um he says i will teach you the prophet which leadeth thee by the way that thou should go so so there's a connection between increase and being led there's a connection between you uh experience increase and you being led by holy spirit so that means holy spirit is one of the uh keys uh that is uh instrumental in opening the door to your increase your increase is not just uh only with just working a bunch of bunch of jobs trying to make a bunch of money but it's in you obeying the leading of holy spirit when i obey the leading of holy spirit he knows where everything is i said it before i'll say it again jesus knew where the money was to pay the uh to pay the tax bill that uh him and peter had to pay he said go fish and in the first fish look in the mouth and there's a piece of money use that to pay the bill jesus knows where your money Money is Jesus knows where your car is see and so he says I've given you Holy Spirit and now he's going to lead you and guide you in the way that you should go he's going to lead you and guide you he says I I'm giving you the comforter I got to go back to heaven but I'm gonna give you the comforter he's gonna be on this earth and now he that's with you me Jesus I will now be in you and I'm gonna make my abode in you and I'm gonna lead you from the inside God God doesn't lead us on the outside. Last week, we dealt with this. God does not lead us based on fleeces. I need a million Christians to hear this, y'all, that God is not leading you based on a fleece. 
He's not leading you. God, if this you, if this is you, Lord, then make this happen. If this is you, no, no, that's an immature prayer. Yes, it may have worked for you before, but after a while, God is going to get you to rely and wants you to rely on his word and, uh, and, and the leading of his spirit and not by the, uh, not by coincidence in the flesh, because the Bible says the devil is the God of this world. And, uh, and, 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 and we, and we, we should not play around and, and, uh, and, and ask God to lead us on the devil's play on the devil's territory. So he has authority to manipulate stuff and do stuff in this natural realm, in this world. He's the God of this world. So we must now begin to grow up and mature and be led not by a fleece. Uh, and we, we get the word fleece from when Gideon, he said, God, if this is you let the dew be on the ground, but not on the blanket, on the fleece. And then if he said, then when it happened, he said, okay, let the dew be on the fleece and not on the ground. And, and he did that because he was nervous and scared and wanted to make sure he would, he, he, he heard God right and that everything was going to be okay. But, um, but see, we're different. We, we have Holy Spirit in us now. Holy Spirit lives in us. We should, we, we are supposed to know God now. We're supposed to know his voice and we're supposed to lead, be, uh, be led by him. And we're going to finish up with that tonight. So, so it's important that we don't go on and say, God, live in God, if this be you, that right there, that one, that one prayer, that one word you say, if means you don't know. So if you don't know, you opening your, uh, opening yourself up to confusion. Now it's something about the devil. The devil isn't all knowing demons, the devil, the, 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 the underworld does, does not know everything. He doesn't know everything. He's not all knowing. That's God. The devil's not all knowing. Demons aren't all knowing. They study you. They analyze you. They listen to you. They check you out to find out how to, uh, how to get you to how to make you angry to how to agitate you. They don't, they, they don't just, they don't just know everything about people, but they study people. That's why the Bible says the tricks and the wiles of the devil. He operates, he operates in through strategy and he's been doing this for umpteen years. So it's important that we realize God knows everything, not the devil. So, so we must, we must be, we must begin to walk in the wisdom of God and not in the co and not just in a coincidence of let this happen. You know, let this happen. We have to mature. We have to mature so we can be led by Holy Spirit and not by the outside world, not by the outside. God did not save your flesh. He didn't save your flesh. Actually, your flesh, it has to be controlled. Your mind has to be renewed. Your spirit man is born again. So God leads you by his spirit. God leads you in the spirit. He's in you, leading you from the inside. And we must walk in and uh, we must walk in that. So it's important that we learn uh, how to be led of Holy Spirit in our everyday life. That's where some of our main, uh, our main manifestations is excuse me, going to come from by being led, by being led by what he is saying, by what God is saying, and not by, uh, and not by just going around saying, God, if that's you, if that's you, like I said, it says, you don't know. It says that I, I'm, con I'm confused about this. So I don't know. Or it says you don't know, or you don't have confidence. And, and one thing that we need, we need knowledge. Faith works. Faith works with knowledge. In order to have faith, you must know something. In order to have faith, you must know something. So faith works on knowledge and also faith works on confidence. This is the confidence that we have. That if we ask anything in his name, that if we, that we ask anything uh, in his, uh, according to his uh, will, he will hear us. So I'll, so it, I, it's key to have confidence. If implies you don't know and it implies you don't have confidence. So it's important for us to be led by Holy Spirit. That's where your victory is. And so, so God says, I'm going to teach you to profit. I'm going to teach you to increase. I'm going to increase you more and more, but I'm going to do it. It's a connection. Because the way you're going to connect to your profit or your increase is through being led by his spirit. So we're going to explore that today and we're going to get into that today. And um, and one of the things that uh, one of the things that we we, we hit on um, was that that uh, that he leads us three ways. There's three major ways God leads us. And I'm going to do a quick review and then I, and then we're going to, I'm going to go on because last week I kind of reviewed and went on and, uh, and I didn't get into everything I wanted to say, but, um, 
there's three ways Holy Spirit leads us mainly. There's three major ways. I talked about the inward witness that God uh, deals with us on the inside. First of all, let's 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 this Bible study, y'all. Let's look at the word and let's go to um, let's go to Proverbs. Let's go to. Uh, yeah. Proverbs. Proverbs 20, please. Let's look at Proverbs 20 and let's check out verse 27. Um, Proverbs 20 and 27. I'll read this. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Um, searching the inward parts of the belly. Um, the spirit of God is the candle of the Lord. We don't use candles, the light of the house. Now we, we, we use light bulbs. So the, the, so the, 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 your spirit is the light bulb. Your spirit is how God light, uh, illuminates, uh, illuminates your life so you can see, see, uh, the thing about it, we live in a dark world and you want direction and the way God guides you. One of the things they would do is back in the old days, when it was dark someplace, they would take a, a candle and they would take those candles. And what they would do is they they would take the candles in the house or in a place to give light so they can see where they're going. And, uh, and God says, in order for you to see where you're going, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use your spirit, man. I'm going to light your spirit man up. I'm going to give your spirit man direction. And the way he gives your spirit man direction is through these ways right here. These three major, uh, ways. Number one, we dealt with it is called the inward witness that God gives you an inward witness that, uh, that, 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 that he's speaking to you. He gives you an inward witness that uh, that that he's that he's dealing with you about some stuff. Romans eight and six talks about that. Th talks about this that the Spirit Himself bears witness that we are the children of God. Now the Spirit of God bears witness that we are the children of God. And then in First John uh, five and ten, the Bible says that we have the uh, the witness on the inside of us. Now said so we are born again and we have the witness on the inside of us. Uh, can I get a witness out there? Um, there's a God gives us a witness on the inside. We have a witness that uh, that that is that is that is present on the inside of us. So so that witness lets us know that you're saved. I mean, that you know that you saved. that the spirit himself, uh, that the spirit witnesses and gives us witness that we are the children of God. So there's a witness on the inside of you and the inner witness. Um, the inner witness, uh, if, if that inner witness can, uh, can, is, 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 is powerful enough and, uh, and accurate enough that it gives you that assurance that you're born again, the witness to know that you're a child of God. See, it's something about it. See, is no one can tell you God did something in you like you can when you know God did it. It's something about when you know that you know that you know. When God has saved you and when God has touched your life, there's a, there's something on the inside that says, I know I've been change. I know something happened on the inside of me. And that same knowing that caused you to stop drinking, stop smoking, stop cussing, stop fornicating, that same knowing God uses on a daily basis, 90% of the time to lead you. Actually, I would even venture to say 97% of the time he leads you through that inward witness. The inward witness is so important that we realize. Now, I want you to understand God does not lead us in the flesh. Our flesh was not born again. Um, second Corinthians five and 17. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. When you got born again, your spirit man got born again because the, nothing was new. All things was new and all things were of God. Your, your flesh looked the same. It wasn't new. Uh, your, your, uh, that your mind, your thinking necessary. It wasn't new. Now you, now you got to renew your thinking, but your, it wasn't new right then instantaneously. But then on the inside of you, you, you were made new. Your spirit man was born again and made new. And now God is inside of you. He's in you. And now he's living in you and directing you from the inside out. He's leading you from the inside. Many of us, we have, we have allowed ourselves to be led by our feelings and reasoning. Your feelings are, are, uh, are just the voice of your body. That's all your feelings are. Your feelings are the voice of your body. How do you know you have pain because of your feelings. Your feelings, your feelings make you make you, make you aware that there's pain. Your feelings, that it, it, it's it's just the voice of your body. Your re reasoning is the voice of your soul or the voice of your mind. And God does not live and God does not operate and lead us in our feelings, and He doesn't operate and lead us in our in our reasoning. 
Many of us say, I feel like God wants to do this. I feel we have to watch those words because are you talking about because you had some caffeine or because you feel good that day? I feel like, oh, feel something like good, something good's going to happen. Why do you feel, why do you say that? Is it because you have a natural feeling or because you have a witness on the inside? There's a difference. There's a difference because you could be feeling horrible on the outside in the physical. Your physical body could be feeling blah or mundane or regular. However, on the inside, you have this anticipation or this quickening on the inside, this witness on the inside that, boy, something's about to happen today. It doesn't mean you're feeling ooh, overjoy and bubbly. We a lot of times think it's going to be a good day because you woke up and you felt good. You know, all you got to do is take the right pill or drink the right type of drink and your flesh will feel good. And, 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 but that does not mean that, 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 uh, that God is speaking to you saying something. All it means is your flesh changed the way it feel. It was feeling your flesh will change how it feels, uh, um, uh, numerous times in one day in one day your feelings will change i say this all the time if you was to if you was to make a record of how many times your feelings changed during the day you may you may some you may go and in, in, uh and in institutionalize yourself because we have multiple feelings all throughout the day one phone call can change all everything one person coming in the room can change the way you feel we're talking to one person can change the way you feel you good and your kids say something wrong and do something something bad boy change the way you feel you hear your husband your wife can change the way you feel but it doesn't change the witness on the inside see if, if you're believing and expecting God and you say God is leading me to do a thing even though there's feelings on the outside that's coming because of the situation it doesn't change the witness so when God say, I want you to go north and all of a sudden everything's coming against you and things are trying to come against the way you feel and you like, man, and you, and you, you trying, I'm, I don't feel it no more. I don't feel like it. No, 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 no. That means, that means that it's just stuff coming against your flesh, trying to, trying to, trying to get you in the, in, uh, in your carnal, in that carnality. So you can follow your feelings instead of following the unction of Holy Spirit. So if you believe God is leading you in the way, it's not based on how you feel. I, I got to I got to stress that because many of us, we we uh, we operate on our feelings, on our flesh or we operate on reasoning just because it makes sense doesn't mean it makes God. It just because it makes sense don't mean it makes faith. Many a times faith don't make sense. When we read the stories of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, we see that many times God makes no sense to the natural realm. So everything God does doesn't make sense. So when you try to make everything line up because it makes sense or you try to reason it out, that means now you're living by your own intellect. You're living by like you, you're living like the Greeks, intelligent. You're trying to live on your intellect. No, no, you can't live on that. That's not what God wants to lead you on your intellect. Good. We need our intellect, but God doesn't want to lead us on reasoning and on our intellect. God doesn't want us to be led by our feelings like a barbarian. You act like a barbarian when you yield to how you feel all the time. You just, you just, I mean, you just, you just flaky. And, and, and uh, when you acting on reason, reasoning, you are, uh, you constantly doubting and all this and you constantly reasoning everything out trying to figure things out trying to do stuff on your own strength and so the key is that we make sure that we eliminate all these other two realms that's trying to lead us in, in into the flesh and begin to uh and begin to focus on the inside what is god saying in here what is how is god leading me in here not about my feelings i i, I it's i'm trying not to harp on this but i think i need to a little bit because we do that in many in many cases many times um uh it's times that i'd be like man i feel like something good Ooh, it feel, i feel i feel good you know you feel good you that day you don't have a headache you, your body feel good and you'd be like whoa okay man and you'd be ready to pray you'd be ready to do, do all of that type of stuff but that doesn't mean that that doesn't mean you're in faith that doesn't mean you're being led by holy spirit just because you feel good naturally that's good though However, however, we have to have the unction and the, or rather the witness on the inside when it comes down to the things of God, when it comes down to the things of God, it's not based on how we're feeling or, or if it makes sense It's based on the unction It's based on the witness It's based on what God is doing on the inside.
is that's what it's all based on. So we got to begin to work on making sure we're God inside minded. Greater is he. First John four and four. I'm giving you scripture as I talk. First John four, four. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. God is in you. So therefore we have to be God inside minded. So it's that witness that we got to walk in. Remember, I said that witness is equivalent to the peace of God. Remember, the peace of God needs to act as umpire. I read those scriptures in the previous teachings. You got to, if I keep going through everything, I'll never get through it. So I got to go ahead and refer you to listen to the, it's on YouTube also. I got these teachings on YouTube. I'm going to put this on YouTube tonight, but uh, it'll be on YouTube, uh, you know, to before tomorrow. But, um, but if you, but if you didn't hear this before, go back and listen to the other two and get the other scriptures about peace and everything that I've been talking about um uh we always would tell people follow the peace go 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 with the peace the ins on the inside because sometimes you can be feeling good out here but on the in here it's like uh, it can be making sense up here but in here you be like uh, i don't know you know i i said you know i said just remember times when you didn't have peace about something and you didn't go with it and it was a right decision remember that remember that uh remember that witness because that's what you need to let let get let guide you remember the last time think about the last time you had peace about something and it worked out right and things worked out good like it was supposed to and it was in it was God now remember that remember how he led you because that is what you go by that is that peace there do uh, I said is sometimes it's like when you perceive something like for some reason I don't know why I perceive it or it's like an intuition I just know I should do this or I know I shouldn't do this or I know that if I do this it'll work out or I know this I there's times when I used to work all the time and my wife would be at home and, and and she'll be messing around with the uh, with the with the uh with the uh, um the uh, what's those things washer and dryers they mess up or something the house around the house mess up and she'll get a witness on the inside of how to do stuff and she'll be like I don't know it's just for some reason I knew that should go there I knew this should happen I knew I should do that it was the inward witness leading her in what she should do it, it that that's the, see and if we harness that it will that's the thing that's leading us is that when you know that you know is that inner peace is that unction I call it is that unction the function it's uh it's it's that check you get when you feel like when you feel oh, something ain't right with that it's that check and, you know you feel that check like uh, i don't know or you feel that green light oh you see you know or is that you get a green light on the inside uh, uh paul said i perceive that something's gonna happen you know in other words he said i i got on the inside it's just not feeling right everybody else was like yeah let's go on this voyage but he was like uh, i don't know and so so you got to begin to be sensitive to that inward witness. The second one we talked about was the inner voice, the inner voice, the inner voice, the still small voice, the still small voice. That's the that's that still small voice there uh, that uh, that that uh, that you hear that leads you. The second one is the still small voice. Remember, the still small voice is the voice of your conscience. The voice of your conscience is the uh, your your conscience is the voice of your spirit. Now, is that's not the voice of the Holy Spirit is the voice of your spirit. So your conscience is your spirit talking to you your conscience convicts you your conscience actually condemns you when you feel condemned about something or feel bad about something is your is your conscience uh the scripture says the scripture says that when that when, when that when you when you don't feel that con from your conscience you got peace with god because your conscience god gave that to you for right and for wrong to help you to help you uh to help you know what you should and shouldn't do the voice of your conscience is the voice is that still small voice is the voice of your spirit is it's, it's, it's supposed to be a safe guide now I just need to do a teaching on this thing about conscience and I don't have time but I have to do a separate one on it because when it comes down to your conscience that uh, we can get to a place to where we disobey our conscience if you are not if you are not yielded to the uh, to God uh, and, and, and 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 you just keep overbearing and I mean you keep overriding your conscience uh, you get to a place to where you can become hard-hearted and, and in order for us to hear God and really to be able to walk in uh, in a fine tune uh, fine tune line with Holy Spirit, we need to begin to have a we need to begin to have a, 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 a clean conscience. Um, 
Let me let me uh, say this. Acts 23 and one. Paul said, I live. I, he says, I live in good conscience. He says, I've all I always make sure my, I'm, I live in a good conscience. Uh, Acts 24 and 16. Um, Paul said that he was uh, that he made sure that his his he, he, he didn't offend his conscience, that his conscience was never He didn't offend it. His conscience, he, he made sure his conscience was always, uh, he was always, um, he made sure he always obeyed his conscience and your conscience is the voice of your spirit leading you in what's right and what's wrong. It's that still small voice you hear. You, you ever, let me, let me, instead of you giving me, give me, giving you a bunch of scripture. Let me show you this. Do you know that, uh, have you ever got mad or got, or, uh, got in your flesh about something and you heard that still small voice in the back of your head, if you will, you heard say, no, stop, don't do it. Calm down. No, now nah, you should listen or trying to reason you out of some stuff to tell you to stop. And, but yet you overrode it and you, and you are ah, nah, uh, blank, 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 blank. But at the same time, in the back of your head, you knew it. You, 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 you felt that thing. You heard that thing. You heard that still small voice saying, no, don't do it. No, don't say that. Don't, don't say, ah, and you said it. It's like this still small voice. Like, no, 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 no. Oh, he did it. And, and what happens, you know, you, you know what I'm talking about. That still small voice says, no, don't go over there. No, you, 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 uh, that, that dude call you and be like, Hey girl, come on over here. And, you know, and you'd be like, uh, you know, I don't know if I should, I don't know. And all of a sudden that still small voice, you'd be hearing, you be, it, it, this, that still small voice, I don't, you'd be like, I don't know. I, sh I, I shouldn't, I, but I don't know. I will see. And while you thinking about it, you hear that still small voice and don't go, don't go over there. Don't go over there. You know you're not strong enough. You know, you, you, I'm telling you, don't go over there. And all of a sudden you go over there. And when you go over there, you end up fornicating and you, 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 you oh man, you mess up. Or, or either or either you around people and you just hear that still small voice saying, uh, if I was you, I'll leave. If I was you, I'll leave. But you stay around and they get in trouble. What I'm trying to say is I'm using those things. I can get I can I got like uh, seven, seven, eight scriptures on conscious stuff right here. But 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 I can bring it to you easier if I just say that if I say that 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 when you're getting angry. And you hear that and you hear that and you hear that voice in the back of your head saying, no, don't do that. Calm down. Calm down. That's the still small voice. Now, as you listen to that, as you go to the grocery store and, and, and you throw your cart and that and you hear, go put the cart back where you're supposed to be. That's your con that's your spirit talking to you, leading you to tell you the right thing to do. You that's what you must begin to learn to obey. That's how you become tender hearted. That's how you become sensitive. That's how you become. Uh, uh, aware to walk in his presence more. Um, I I want to I want to read these two scriptures because they, these are two giant scriptures about this um, about this in Romans uh, Romans. Let's just read Romans uh, nine and one. We'll just read that one since that's the one I've been on. Romans nine and one. He says, I say the truth in Christ. I lie not my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost, my conscience bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. So, 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 so see when it comes down to it, your conscience, uh, your conscience, the Bible says it bears witness with you. Your conscience will, uh, will, will help lead you and guide you, um, in your everyday affairs. Is that still small voice talking to you? We don't hear many, um, sermons on, uh, uh, we don't hear many sermons on on conscience, but Romans two and five says, uh, which showeth the work of the written law in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness and their thoughts. Um, the meanwhile accusing or else accusing one another. Now, when you read that is basically saying and letting you know your conscience uh, will bear witness with the word. Your conscience bears witness with the word. Your conscience, your God will give you that uh, still small voice that bears witness with the word. See, the, your, your conscience, your conscience uh, is, is working with God to, 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 to lead you in your everyday life. Your conscience, God put that, put that part of you there as a part of your spirit makeup and it's the voice of your spirit you hear me it's the voice of your spirit and so so we must we must not we must not just disregard our conscience we don't need a seared conscience a, a, a conscience that's just that's just that's just cold that's just uh that 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 uh that we just we just override it no and keep overriding it and disobeying it so if if you're con if you hear that still small voice say put the grocery cart back go do it 
because because what is happening is is that little thing that little trivial thing making you sensitive you ain't gonna go to hell because of it but but guess what is making you sensitive by by obeying it um by 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 uh by doing stuff you like i knew i should have did that and you know why you knew should you should have did that because that's still small voice you hear that still small voice telling you what you do what you should do what you what you should do yeah, and it's not no big loud voice in your head it's that still small voice T telling you what to do now the way you recognize that the best way to recognize that is to go back in the times when you've been mad when you've been angry or when you was doing something and you heard that and you heard that little voice tell you stop no don't do that go over here don't go over there or go over there and uh and and you heard that and either you obeyed it or it didn't but you remember that now remember that because when you hear that voice that sm still small voice will lead you in other affairs of life to help you and to help you gain the advantage so you can walk into your increase and walk into what God has for you. God is talking to you and he's using your conscience, the voice of your spirit. And you, that's the still small voice. Now that's your spirit talking to you. That's you. That's your spirit. That's the voice of your spirit. Now that's the voice of your born again spirit leading you and guiding you, uh, uh, through the character, uh, through, through the characteristics of the word of God and, and, uh, and of the gifts of the spirit. I mean, the fruit of the spirit you have to be sensitive so we got to sensitize ourselves and begin to uh make sure we become more aware um uh, uh not ephesians but uh but hebrews 10 and 2 talks about how um we shouldn't be so sin conscious that we are more aware of sin than we are of god we need to become more God conscience, God on the inside of me conscience. We need to be, become, listen to this word, aware, more aware of the still small voice. It's time for us to become more aware of the inward witness, more aware of the still small voice. Thirdly, is, uh, is God leads you through the voice of Holy Spirit. Um, he leads you, thirdly, through the voice of of Holy Spirit. One of my favorite uh, scriptures to, um, to talk about that, one of them, uh, one of them is right here. Let me read it in, in the book of Acts. Um, Acts, mm -mm -mm. and let's look at, um, well, let's look at uh, verse, let's look at verse 10. I mean, sorry, Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10, look at verse uh, 19. While Peter thought on the vision, while he was thinking on the vision, listen to this. The spirit said unto him, three men uh, seek thee, arise therefore and go down and go with them, doubting nothing for I have sent them. So there, while he was up of this thinking about the vision, the Bible says the spirit spoke to him. Now, the third way God speaks to you is through uh, is through the voice of whole is through the voice of Holy Spirit. When Holy Spirit speaks to you, Holy Spirit speaks to you. Many a times it sounds. Uh, what's the difference between the, your conscience, the voice of your conscience and the voice of Holy Spirit? The difference is that number one uh, is more authoritative, is, is more is more is more distinct, is more powerful. Um, uh, uh, also, is uh, also a lot of times it sounds more real. It sounds like somebody's talking to you. Some Sometimes it can sound audible. You, it's like, oh, it's distinctively put it like this. When Holy Spirit speaks, you know it. So when the Holy Spirit speaks to you, you know that. And it's one of them type of things that is undoubtable. You know it. The best way to say it, the best way to learn it is, is, is by this. You know it. You, when it happens, you know it. Um, uh, and that's when the Holy Spirit speaks to you. And, uh, and Holy Spirit speaks to us. But, but however God is leading us in that time and whatever way he chooses, this, we just got to yield to how he's leading us. Sometimes Holy Spirit will speak. Sometimes it's just still small. It's the still small voice, the voice of your conscience. Sometimes or or most of the time is that inward witness in your everyday life to lead you to buy the car, not buy the car, to go over here. Oh, no, don't talk to that dude. The stills, that inward witness be trying to tell you he's not good for you. He no, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. And we avoid that and we just do it anyway. Or we, or, you know, it's, it's so many, all these, even before you get all the red lights, the, your, your conscious, I mean, your, that inward witness, you don't, you, you know, you'd be like, uh, I don't know. I may, I shouldn't talk to him, but I'll see. I'll let it ride. When the Holy Spirit is trying to give you that witness not to do a thing.
So the still small voice is uh, he, 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 he uses on a regular basis. Uh, and one of the main ways uh, he uses to speak to us on a, on a regular basis also is through that inward witness. And then there's times, there's times, not all the time, but there's times, there's times, specific times, maybe through your calling. Um, uh, you were now, uh, when, when Paul and, and, and all of them was praying and, and, and fasting, they were ministering unto the Lord. And all of a sudden acts 13, listen to this one more of them. And I, I'm on a, I'm on a, I'm going to say what I wanted to say tonight. Take it. Acts 13, um, verse two says they ministered to the Lord and fasted. Listen, the Holy, the Holy Ghost said, separate unto me, Paul and Barnabas. When it comes, see, when, when, when you get called to ministry, when God is speaking to you to an assignment, when Holy Spirit speaks to you like this, when Holy Spirit speak to you, I found out and I've seen through the scriptures that it seems like it's for an assignment and that it's for a, something really important, that it's a job that God wants you to do, or that it's something, it's something very urgent. Many a times when the Spirit, when the Holy, when the Holy Spirit talks to you, it's, uh, when you hear the voice of Holy Spirit talks to you, it's either it sounds distinct, it's authoritative, it sounds it sometimes it sounds like somebody's audibly talking to you, but nobody hears it but you, because he's speaking to it's the Holy Spirit speaking to your spirit, and all of a sudden he boom he speaks to you and you be like uh and 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 see he's not speaking like this he speak it's coming from the inside, but it's so authoritative it just sounds like almost an audible man somewhere around talking to you. When you I, I'll never forget when I got a call about the ministry holy spirit spoke to me about the ministry holy spirit spoke to me about the call of god on my life holy spirit spoke to me about uh about me being an apostle holy spirit spoke to me about um he, he about me being a prophet to the nations i i, I heard him he says he says i've called you to be a uh, an apostle to the region and a prophet to the nations i heard it just as clear as day and i'm like man i remember my mom was like oh she you know different places at different times she hear she hear holy spirit and when holy spirit speaks to you you do like my mom oh i heard holy spirit you get excited because you know he talked to me boy i he, I, I heard him and that's when the holy spirit's talk to you it's it, it's not you know that that voice don't happen all day every day but all day every day you get a you get the inward witness all day every day the still small voice helps guide you all day every day these things happen in the ministry, you hear Holy Spirit in, uh, in for cause of ministry. You hear the voice of Holy Spirit, even yes, in your everyday life, God, uh, you hear the voice of Holy Spirit. And so it's important that we that we are that we are sensitive, that we are that we're tender and sensitive to Holy Spirit. And the key is um, first Thessalonians five and twenty one says prove all things. First Thessalonians five and twenty one says prove all things. Everything God says to you, whether it's through the end, everything God leads you to or guides you to or, or says to you, it all must be proven by the word of God. God would not, Holy Spirit would not lead you any other way other than the word. Okay. Um, so we got to, uh, let me, let me, let me get down. Let me get down to business here. Um, so remember we tell, we talk about rooting out your flesh, rooting out your, uh, rooting out reasoning, um, and your mind, because, uh, many of us have a problem. Is it me, God or the devil? And, and if you realize, if you begin to take away these, those, the, uh, the feelings, and, and, and I'm not going to live by how I feel. I'm not led by how I feel. I'm not led by reasoning and intellect. And if you take away those and if you let and if you, and if you take time and, uh, and spend time in the word now and begin to develop your spirit. You see, because God said, let me let me get you to the nitty gritty. Since God speaks to our spirits, we have to uh, we have to we have to develop our spirits. See, God is not going to always, you know, speak to you through a prophecy. God will speak to you through a vision. God spoke uh, in Acts uh, 26 and 19. Uh, Paul talked about he had a heavenly vision in uh, Acts 10, 9 through 11. Peter was in a trance and had a vision. Um, we find out uh, we find out God can do all that type of stuff. Angels can come to you. Jesus himself can come to you. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, many people, um, you know, some people would like to be led and try to get 
led by prophecy. But in the New Testament, you don't see people being led by prophecy as much. You see them being confirmed, things being confirmed and said to him. When the prophet came to Paul and told him about what was going to happen, he didn't give him direction. I do want to say this real quick. Remember, when Agabus came to uh, the Apostle Paul in Acts and, and he took his belt and said, whoever owns this belt will be uh, will be shackled and taken back to Jerusalem. And uh, and, and he told him what would happen. And uh, he gave him a word of knowledge and he gave him a word of wisdom of what would happen. He gave him a word of wisdom. He showed him what would happen and uh, by Holy Spirit. But all of a sudden, then whether Paul was to go or not to uh, once he got that word, it was based on the leading of the Holy Ghost. It was based on the leading of Holy Spirit that Paul gave that Paul had. So they was trying to get Paul not to go because of that word. But Paul was led by the spirit to go because he knew what he was supposed to do. So it's important that even when you get a prophecy that you know what God is saying to you, that you're led by God, because in the New Testament, prophecy isn't to try to guide your life. Prophecy should be doing more confirming and, and confirming. You hear me? Confirming what God is doing. That's a that's a that you need to get my the prophecy stuff. Um, so now now we have to be uh, according to Hebrews ten and two. We have to become more. Uh, we have to become less sin conscience. We have, in other words, we have to become more God conscience. Not not that we don't have sin around us. Yes, we need to we need to hate sin and love and hate the devil and love God with all of our heart. But now we need to train our spirits to be more God conscience. We need to be more conscious of him leading us in order for us to be led properly we must begin to uh we must begin to train our spirit we must begin to uh, uh grow in the on the inside not out here just on the outside we get intellectually smart we get into all of this but we don't spend enough time getting our spirits ready and training our spirit so that we can so that we can recognize the still small voice so we can recognize that inward witness See, you got to recognize the check. You got to recognize it. You got to recognize that uh, that still small voice. You got to recognize when Holy Spirit is talking to you. You got to recognize when God is trying to lead you through through uh, through a, through a situation. You know, you got to recognize when it. And a lot of times we are not spiritually aware of it. So we got to become more God conscious and God inside minded. So God is not leading us through these ears. He's not leading us just through these eyes. He's not leading us based on the outside situations. He's leading us from in here and in the word of God. So it must come from in here and it must confirm the word of God. When God leads you by his spirit, by Holy Spirit. Uh, okay. So first of all, we need to start meditating in the word of God. Joshua 1 and 8 talks about it very simply that we should meditate in the word of God day and night. Now, this is the this is the key. I was talking about this on the um, on the partner page, how it's important that we meditate, have meditation. Meditation don't mean saying home, not like Buddha and Hindus and all those uh, not 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 the, not those uh, uh, new age uh, type things. Um, but but rather when we say meditate, meditate, the word meditate in the Old Testament means to means to think on, to ponder on, to roll over, to mutter it means to, you know, you where you talk low to yourself. Uh, it means to speak out loud. So when you think about uh, when you think about meditate, don't think about sitting in the in, in, in Indian style and just being quiet. No, we do need to do that. We do need to be quiet before God and, and spend some time being quiet to hear him. However, one of the things uh, of meditation, part of that meditation is to think on or is to is to think on, to roll over in the mind, to go over those scriptures over and over again, to go over the word, to, to, to meditate on that word, to meditate on it, to think on it, to ponder on it, to speak speak on it. So we need to train our spirits through meditation on the word of God and speak in the word of God. Because remember, Holy Spirit is going to bring back and lead you. And the foundation is based on the word that you have. You can't confirm that something's in the word. If you don't know the word, you can't be led by Holy Spirit by the word. If you don't know the word. So you must begin to begin, begin to sensitize your spirit to the word. And, and it, it, it begins to happen by meditation, meditation on the word of God. It's very simple. Listen to this. This book of the law, Joshua 1, 8, shall not depart from out of your mouth, but thou shall meditate on it day and night. And he says, when you meditate, you're going uh, to observe how to do it.
and you will and then you're going to make your way prosperous and then you're going to have good success so prosperity and the good success the increase and everything is not going to come until you meditate on the scriptures meditate in that word so the first thing you have to do begin to do is spend time thinking on the word speaking the word meditating the word spend time around the word you need to develop that time with with god in his word the second thing we need to do is to make sure as we meditate on the word uh, uh because part Part of meditating on the word is hearing it, thinking on it, speaking it, muttering it, letting it roll over in your head, spending time with it, just just being around it, just letting it just letting it soak in, man. That's meditating on that word, the way it's just getting in you, just marinating, getting in you, saturating yourself with the word. But then it's not that's not enough. Secondly, we must practice that word. We got to practice the word. J James 1 and 22 says, be doers of the word and not hearers only. So the more we practice the word, the more we sensitize ourselves to it. The more we practice the word, it begins to train our spirit. We're training our spirits to be, uh, to be able to, uh, to be able to rec to be aware when God is speaking. We're training our spirits to be more God conscious. We're training our spirits to be more aware of Holy Spirit. We're training our spirits spirits, not our flesh. We done trained our flesh good enough. We got to train our spirits through meditation of the word of God. Number one, thinking on it, saturating it in your uh, listening to it, hearing it, listening to it. Well, how much are you listening to the word? How often do you play? Man, I need to do it. I just need to hit these four things only. But uh, meditation, we don't spend enough time hearing the word. We don't spend enough time thinking on the word. We don't spend enough time talking about the word. And we definitely don't spend enough time speaking the word. We need to meditate the word. It, it that's one way to train. That's the first thing you got to start doing when it comes down to training your spirit. Um, the second thing is, like I said, practice the word. You got to practice doing it. You got to actually obey it. Obey the word. Practice doing it. Number three, listen to this, y'all. Make the word first place in your life. Make the word first place in your life. Make the word a priority. Oh, I got to hurry up. I got five minutes at least. Make the word priority. Train we're, what we're talking about now. We're talking, we're, we're finishing this up by saying we got to train our spirits so that we can walk and we can, uh, we can recognize or be aware of, um, of, of the, of the, uh, the inward witness, the still small voice of the voice of Holy Spirit. So we got to make the word first place. Proverbs 4, verse 20 through 22. Proverbs 4, verse 20. I'll just read that one right now. It says, my son, attend to my words. Listen, incline thine ear to my sayings. He says, attend to my words incline thine ear to my sayings you need to make it first place that's the watch this seek ye first the kingdom of god my, matthew 6 33 seek ye first the kingdom seek ye first get in other words prioritize the word See the way, see the way, the, well, I thought you, I thought we talking about being led by the spirit. Yes, because being led by the spirit as you, if you want to be aware of his leading, you must begin to train your spirit to, uh, to hear the voice of God. You got to train your spirit and, uh, to become more aware when you having that, uh, inward witness, more aware of that still small voice, more aware of it, because be honest, we've been so worldly conditioned and fleshly conditioned and we've been so carnal we've been missing the leading we've been missing god lead us how many of us have been missing god lead us into our prosperity we miss god leading us into our victory we miss god leading us into our money we miss god leading us in so many other ways because we're so busy doing everything in the natural that we're not taking time out to make the word and make god's uh program priority number four Lastly, watch this, y'all. Instantly obey the word. Once you hear the word, we have to instantly obey it. I love this scripture. Instantly obey the word, written and spoken, written and spoken. When you feel that, when when you get, when you hear that still small voice, do it. When you, when Holy Spirit, do it. When you get that unction, when you get that uh, witness, do it, do it, do it instantly obey the word of god listen deuteronomy 28 and 1 the bible says if thou shalt listen to this word hearken diligently unto the voice of the lord thy god hearkening diligently me it, it means this to listen with the intent to do it that i'm listening to god and with the with the whole purpose is so i can get up and do it diligently so it's important that we meditate the word 
practice the word, make the word first place and, and, uh, and instantly obey the word. This is how we're going to sensitize our spirits. Uh, this is how we're going to become more God conscious instead of, uh, instead of the, instead of devil conscience. We're going to become more God inside minded and more God inside conscience and more sensitive to our spirit more so than the things out here, because what we're going, what we need to do is we need to slow down our own program and our own agenda and take time meditating in the word. Like, you know, at, at night we listen to the, you look in the, you look at TV, you do this, but guess what? Why don't you turn on the word while you're sleeping? Why don't you turn on the word in the morning while you're getting dressed? Why don't you turn on the word while you're in the bathroom getting ready? Why don't you turn on the word while you're just washing the dishes? Why don't you turn on the word when you're driving? Why? Thank God for the music, but why don't you just turn on the word and that, and let, and just, that's part of the meditation part of meditation that's meditation when you wake up why don't you just uh, why don't you just spend time and take time confessing the word and conf that's meditation why don't you spend time you know take take five minutes take a couple of minutes and just 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 be quiet and think on the word spend some quiet time you know just 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 saturate yourself with the word and and build your prayer life around that thing um uh, wake up praying in tongues and 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 uh, and sensitizing yourself to the spirit of God and um, and so so meditation on the word of God practice in the word of God put it in practice every day uh, I gotta hurry up um, uh, and then then thirdly um, make the word first place make it a priority not just something you do on Sundays not just something you do on Wednesday make it a priority third I mean lastly uh, lastly I, I, I put instantly obey the word don't wait, instantly obey it. See, when you become a doer like that, when you obey the word like that, to him that have more shall be given. When we, when we become instantly, instant obeyers of the word, man, that's instant results. Instant obedience can equal instant harvest, can equal instant manifestation. I, I missed one thing. I'm going to say five, number five, the last thing and I'm done. Pray in tongues more. Pray in the Holy Ghost more. As you pray in the Holy Ghost more, it sensitizes you in the spirit realm. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that this word uh, was uh, was understandable. I pray it blessed them and helped them in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for those that's listening and those that will listen. And I pray, Lord, that the word will bring forth a hundredfold in their life in Jesus name. Amen. Well, 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 I'm going to stop right now. Um, uh, I use an older phone um, when I to, to look at everything, and I and so I I didn't see all the uh, the different ones. Uh, but thank God for your comments. I see I see I see y'all commenting early. Uh, wife um, Burns and and different ones. Elder Thompson. I see y'all commenting. Thank you for commenting. Y'all keep on commenting. Uh, I'm gonna get better with with, with, with communing with y'all and comment and you know going back and forth. But uh, but make sure you share this. Let somebody know about it and uh, and be blessed in the name of the Lord. Um, I, I pray that you got this. Listen, I've been talking about on the partner page how our hearing God connects us to harvest. So you got to make sure you listen to the partner page. Listen to it every day. Turn it on every day and be blessed by it. It'll bless you real good. But I pray that you got something out of this. We got to be led by Holy Spirit, y'all. We got to be led. I, it, this is this is good. This is what God is saying. And so next week, uh, we I, I may go over these last things again. I don't know, but I'm not rushing it. I want to get as much as I can out because if I can, sometimes you'd be like, I don't know how, or I don't know how to be led. I don't know how to hear the voice of God. I, you know, there's no, there's no scripture that says the voice of God sounds like this, but I can try my best to try to, to try to use examples. Like when you get angry and you hear that still small voice and calm down, stop. And you hear that, that's that, that's the, that's the voice of your conscience. That's your conscience. That's the voice of your spirit talking to you saying don't do that when when uh when when you when that that check that inward witness when you feel that check and everything and you and you felt it and and the, and, the, and the thing that you felt happened and that inward witness that thing that you witnessed the thing that on the inside that you were like i don't know when you felt that peace and you did it and it was god when you when you didn't feel the peace and then you did it anyway but it wasn't god and you're like man i knew i shouldn't have, i ain't feel no peace you know re remember those th times times when you heard god speak and you got oh man i heard god i was i was taking a shower and i heard the lord or i was i was doing this and i heard god speak i was driving and i heard god and i got so excited remember those times 
you take some quiet time and think about those times and think about the times when when you had an accurate witness on the inside about something when you had an accurate uh when you had when you when you heard when you heard that still small voice warning you about your attitude or don't do this or put something back or go do this or pick that up or you know better speak to them or that little still small voice that guides you in your everyday affairs with people and stuff yeah that's the voice of holy spirit that's the that's the voice of your spirit talking to you and then remember those times when you hear that dynamic voice of holy spirit calling you to ministry or telling you something that you'd be like oh man you get excited about you know god to tell you something that you'd be like whoa he'll tell you about somebody else and you'd be like hey man whoa he'll tell you about yourself and you'd be like oh really god and so so that that still small voice i mean that inward witness that still small voice and voice of holy spirit it works for everything god to talk to you and lead us and lead us and i'm expecting it to happen and work in my life also so I pray you were blessed. Now use that same inward witness. Use that same uh, uh, still uh, small voice. Use that same guidance through the voice of Holy Spirit and sow your seed tonight. I want you to uh, I want you to take a moment and ask God, Lord, how much should I give? Let's begin to obey God now. Let's start obeying God now, even in our giving. So I want you all to make sure that you uh, that you take the time and actually not just throw five dollars on cash out or do this or do that. I want you to actually say, God, how much do you want me to sow tonight? God may say, so that one, so that, uh, so that Psalms one eighteen twenty five seed. Blow. There must be something about that. God may say, so that one eighteen that one hundred and eighteen dollars and twenty five cent. That represents. Psalms 118 25 send now prosperity he may say so a hundred dollars so fifty dollars he may say because the reason why I say this is because sometimes we get stuck in giving a certain amount because the Bible says that we should give according God God accepts it as we give according as as we purpose to give so let him give that's scriptural that's biblical that's right that's good that's how God did it however there's times that you purpose to give 20 but God said, give 50. You purpose to give five, but God said, give that hundred that you've been saving for that dress. You know, you, you, you purposed to say, I'm, I'm gonna give $100 of my income tax. And God said, give the whole thing. What I'm saying is this, let's be experts in hearing God and not in just not in everything except our finances. Let's be an expert in hearing God right now. Let's be an expert in hearing the Lord and let's and let's practice that last thing that I said instantly obey and I want you to go on uh, cash app go on PayPal uh, if you need something else to mail if you if, I don't know you may be mailing it I don't know however you gonna give today uh, whatever avenue you gonna give I want you to do it instantly go right now and do it now as soon as i mean you may can't do it while i'm talking because you want to hear everything i'm saying but do it now soon as we off sow your seed soon as you get that time sow your seed and be blessed in the name of the lord so father i come into agreement with them for their psalms 118 25 uh, uh breakthrough victory miracle and i pray lord that you will cause a victory in every area of their life especially in their money lead them into the way that they should go teach us the prophet and show us lord where we need to go i speak increase i speak i speak creativity i speak turnaround i speak breakthrough i declare it over them now in the name of jesus that as they sow their seed that they will get harvest within 72 hours i declare the blessing over their life i declare the blessing over their finances i decree it and i declare it now in the name of jesus i come into agreement with them father we thank you at indy harvest we thank you that we're blessed that we're rich that we're abundantly supplied thank you lord that we're rich that we're blessed that we're abundantly supplied that we live the abundant life in the name of jesus thank you that we have uh that we have all that we need that there's no lack in indy harvest in the name of jesus that there's no lack in the partners in the name of jesus i speak no lack in jesus name that we are prosperous in Jesus name. I thank you, Lord, for our building. We, we believe you that we believe we receive our building. We believe we receive everything that is ours. We believe we receive the resources that's needed. We call in our harvest to come forth now. Angels, go bring it in from the north.
north, south, east, and west, bringing our harvest, our financial harvest now in the name of Jesus. I call for the harvest to come forth in Jesus' name. And Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you that you provide, that every bill is paid, and that you supply our needs. Not only do you fill us to full, but according to John 10, 10, you said, Lord, that you've come that we may have life and have it more abundantly to the full till it overflows. So thank you that you fill us to full and you cause overflow in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you make us rich, abundantly supplied in the name of Jesus. And I add my agreement and bless that seed as they obey you with that still small, as they obey you with the unct, with the in, with the inward witness, as they obey you with that still small voice, as they obey you uh, uh, because of the voice of the Holy Spirit, how whatever way you use, Lord, to lead them and guide them in their giving, as they obey you, I add my agreement with them for their harvest speedily in Jesus name. So go ahead, sow your seed and be blessed. I got to go. Don't forget, check out the partner page uh, tomorrow. Let's keep on listening to the partner page. Go back, listen to this. Listen to things that I've said. Use this, use this broadcast like a resource. Go back and listen to certain things I said, certain scriptures. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. And let's be blessed in the name of the Lord. I pray you've been being blessed over these three weeks and uh and i and there's much more to come so don't forget uh don't forget to sow your seed and be blessed i look forward to seeing you uh at indie harvest on sunday morning 2926 east washington street 11 a.m come on and check us out at indie harvest and join the revival partners go and bring somebody bring somebody get somebody do the work of an evangelist let's see souls save and bodies heal and lives change for the glory of god partners you be blessed friends you be blessed everybody be blessed in the name of the lord and if you need prayer for anything inbox us inbox us right here on this page inbox us on paul and tar thompson ministries if you need prayer for any reason we want to pray and believe god with you we don't want to leave your prayer needs unattended we want to pray with you and believe god so uh so so it can be orderly and easier just inbox us on this page right here inbox us on the page that we're preaching on whatever page we're preaching and talking on inbox us on that page and put your prayer requests in and we're going to pray and believe god for you in the name of jesus thank you for your time thank you for sowing your seed and god bless you and have a great night i'll see you at church come on and join the revival and remember this god wants us to live one type of life and that is the abundant life you have a great night. God bless you. Salud.